Hello, and welcome to my ACS talk at the Spring Symposium. I am Dr. Messina Morris, and I'll be talking about exploring the capability of using a cross-disciplinary approach to implementing a virtual reality in chemistry education. This is my CV on a slide. So there's a lot of things on here that tell the story a little bit about me. So I have a bachelor's in chemistry from Clark Atlanta University. I got my master's and PhD in biomolecular chemistry from Emory University. I was the former interim department chair of chemistry at Morehouse College and am now in the department of education at Morehouse College and at the Morehouse Center for Excellence in Education. I am the PI of the Morris Research and Innovation Lab Group and the 2021 Vulcan Teaching and Excellence Awardee. I'm the chair of the faculty research committee. More importantly, I'm a wife and mom of five sons and an autism advocate because two of my sons have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. What I find to be super cool about this particular slide are my avatars. So you see me, but do you see my avatars in our futuristic chemistry lab in virtual reality? This is also me giving a tour at the Underground Railroad exhibition during Black History Month. But this is also me under the safety shower in our chemistry lab. It is the exact replica of the chemistry lab that we have in Merrill Hall on Morehouse's campus. So we teach in immersive virtual reality. So here are my students in Zoom, all in their headsets. Here are students in a microbiology lab with Dr. Ethel Lorraine, all in virtual reality Oculus Quest 2 headsets. Here's Professor Mickey Harris with her multimedia and storytelling journalism course, all in virtual reality. An immersive virtual reality, which we use on Morehouse's Metaversity campus, the user becomes fully immersed in this artificial three-dimensional world. It's very nice because our students become fully immersed and it's distraction free. They are continuously being positioned and repositioned based on their own movements. They can use it in a stationary setting or they can move around as Dr. Harris's courses are doing, as you see here. So who built our digital twin campus? We didn't do it ourselves. Our secret sauce is literally Victory XR. We're our educational partners and they built our digital twin campus on the Engage platform. Engage is an app within the Oculus Quest 2 um, headset. And so the headset itself is untethered, which means you don't need a PC or Mac or anything, but you can also access it from the PC. So our students could opt out of being in a headset if they had any other problems. They could access it from their phones, they could access it from their uh, PC or their Mac, and they could still engage somewhat with the content, but it, obviously it wasn't immersive as it would be if they were in the headset. What I liked about it as an educator was there were so many functionalities like 3D voice, which means that, you know, like when you're in the Zoom, you have to put your students in breakout rooms. You don't really know what they're doing. Um, you can't have private one-on-one -on -one conversations because if you leave the main room and you're in a different room from your students, then you don't know what the other room is doing. You can't put students on hold. Well, in this synchronous virtual reality platform, you can do that. It has a lot of classroom management. You know, like how in this talk, like all of us are in this one space and if I needed everybody to come on the front row, I could just summon you to me. That's the kind of classroom management it is. I could lock you all in your seats. You couldn't leave this room unless you raised your hand and I excused you, that kind of functionality. And there are assessment options. So you can create quizzes and surveys and tests. You can't cheat. I love that part. So I know that what you know is what you knew. It's what you learned, it's what you engaged with. And it helps me because then it makes me tailor my testing to more individualized methodology, right? You can project videos from online, from YouTube, from Dropbox, from OneDrive. You can access different spaces. You can do virtual field trips. So I can't pick up and take 60 students anywhere or 50 students anywhere like around the world right now. One, we have a COVID 
pandemic still going on globally. Uh, number two, it costs a lot for me to fly or take or even travel halfway across the city, much less taking you because gas is what, about $5,000 uh, a gallon. So I can't do anything with my students, but in these virtual headsets, they can access content that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. They can access instrumentation. They can look at different things around the world be engaged in different time frames and all kinds of things. So it's really wonderful that for that. You don't have to be walking around. You can be seated. I sit down. And look at me. I have a face enabled avatar. So it's in my likeness. And I like that. I'm taking me with myself in this metaverse space. I did this in my advanced and organic chemistry lab. I chose lab because it gave me more time for if we had any technical issues, any connectivity issues, any other problems, my students would be able to um, have more time to get acclimated. Our labs are generally, you know, in chemistry about five hours long. We have one hour of recitation generally, and then we have another four hours for actual skill building and content. During the global pandemic of, of 2020, we didn't have labs and we didn't have a lot of simulated content, even in virtual reality. Most of the things that you see were content that I created along with Victory XR. So they created our digital twin, which you see here. And we did an onboarding where they actually learn how to move and how to um, maneuver in this virtual world. But them creating molecular geom geometrical molecules in three dimensions in space. It's something that I never, I can't take them in space, but they were able to all be astronauts that day. And they were all able to, instead of just using a modeling kit that I had them order off Amazon and sit and do, they were able to all be together and put together these molecules. And then I made them resize them based on their own, um, so the size of the atoms I had them Think about the bond length, whether it was a single bond, double bond, triple bond, all of those things they had to take into account. They even had to add long pairs by the end of it. They had to make sure that they had the right bond angles, all of those things they had to think about because this is advanced level chemistry. So they should know all of these things. And then they had to name them and then present. But I was able to be there for all of it and walk them through all of it. And so this was some skill building that we did. Other things that we did were pedagog were different pedagogy. So I had to take different approaches, like we had to do problem-based learning, case-based learning type of things in order to get our, our meet our student learning outcome. So this case of Curtis Dilemma to meet our acid-based student learning outcomes where students had to quantify the amount of acid um, and bases that they needed, bases that they needed to quench the amount of acids. Um, at the indigestion that one of the Morehouse College students had. So I developed this case and they had to go through the digestive system and look at inflamed tissues, but it was the entire case that was built around this. So it was a wonderful way for them to dive into the content a little bit differently. So here's just an overview of some of the work that is being done on the Morehouse College campus. These are just um, some examples of the culturally responsive classrooms that we have available for our students to explore.
So these were just some of the assessment and student feedback examples that we saw from our students. Uh, this work has been published at the International Conference on Education, Research, and Innovation in 2021 by me and my colleagues. We presented on transforming undergraduate education in the sciences and humanities with virtual reality and talked about the case at Morehouse College. So this was a Caltrics survey that was done and our students had to in advanced in organic chemistry had to look at a, uh, whether they felt like these concepts in virtual reality were useful in conveying the concepts that they were supposed to get out of the class. And so that out of all of the concepts, was it useful? So one was not useful, a four was very useful. And our classes are small. We have 2,100 students, we have about 30, majors in chemistry at our most maybe 50 but we're a service department but this is an upper level class only seniors take it so we had nine students uh, that took this course and nine responded and out of it for the most part students felt like these concepts were useful so the feedback that we got the qualitative feedback. I was most engaged during our VR sessions, especially during the introduction today because everything was so new to me, being in VR, playing with the different tools in the lab on VR were fun and interactive. I specifically enjoy making the 3D molecules using circles and sticks in the VR in space. So those kinds of comments that students write are very important in continuing this type of work. So the overall VR experience was positive. 67% of students based on this pie chart said that it was an awesome experience for them. 33% said it was good. Gray would be neutral and red would be terrible and no one said that it was that. So same thing that was on the last slide about it being engaging. I just repeated it here so that in case you didn't get a chance to read it, you could most engage during the VR sessions specifically enjoyed making the 3D molecules using circles and sticks in the VR um, in space. VR is actually effective for students for teaching chemistry. Over 90% of the students felt like the effectiveness of VR was apparent in the lessons that were taught. Um, I, when asked the question, what was the most helpful for learning in the course, the recorded video that Dr. Morris created was helpful in helping us explain our class experiment. So instead of when they went into the virtual classroom or the virtual world, they would see me just be pull down any type of video from anybody else. They saw videos of me. More than that, I would even record myself doing a pre-lecture as an avatar and pull that recording up. And they saw me again in that space. So they saw me several times over in this space, but it was all to make them feel welcomed and warm and inviting and to see me in my own creativity, creating a space for them, a place for them that they were comfortable with, just as if they were on campus. I didn't want them coming into a sterile environment that did not feel just like they were coming into my office, just like they were coming on campus. I wanted them to feel like Dr. Morris is in the house. The interactive nature of this course while learning and participating made learning amazing. That's what I wanna hear from students. And that's exactly what we got from students. Out of the mouths of scholars. The cross-disciplinary work that we focused on covered the text, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. I have a colleague by the name of Dr. Tanya Clark and she was one of the four professors who implemented virtual reality as a classroom. So she is a part of the original Ultimate Team members. And what she did was had our students read certain excerpts from The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, and we tied that to a lesson in metals in medicine. So what was very important is I was teaching in advanced in organic chemistry, which really ties in the rest of the periodic table and primarily the metals 
on the periodic table, which the periodic table is mostly metals. Um, but it ties in the metallic part of the, chem the chemistry into the science. And we talk about metals in medicine and how it's used in our medicine to heal us and how it has been used to harm us. At Morehouse, a part of our QEP is to infuse Black life history and culture into our lessons and writing. And so we read this text, we met the student learning outcomes of writing and reading journal articles about radium, about chemotherapy drugs made in the 1950s from radium um, as a treatment that Henrietta Lacks had that also killed her along with the cancer, but that her cells that were taken, her HeLa cells that were taken from her, that her family didn't know were taken from her, created the medication that then healed generations of people from the cancer that killed her and the chemotherapy drugs that she ended up taking, uh, that, that people end up taking now that saves their lives was all because she had cells that were immortal. And so we talked about black people as superheroes. So she came up with this entire lesson that interwove this text so well into my chemistry lesson that students will read in the book to figure out how metals are used in medicine and how uh, FDA approves medications. And then this made them start thinking about how vaccine matrices are made and how, um, how do they how lead poison, I mean, they went through a whole lot of ethical discussions and a whole lot of things because a lot of students want to be in medicine. So this was a remarkable lesson and a narrative that added so much value about the evolution of medicine and of science and chemistry and literature. And it was powerful and our students' favorite lesson. She also did it for Dr. Ethel Marine's biology men's health course that he designed. Um, and he is also a powerhouse because he created that entire course from scratch and did it in virtual reality on top of that. And that is an amazing course. But what were the benefits? More benefits than there were any limitations. Collaboration. Collaborating with my colleagues and having my students see that collaboration come to life uh, in a space that is new and emerging and cutting edge was amazing. The integration of information. So students go out in the workplace and they feel like they're gonna be in these siloed environments. And really it's teamwork that really makes the dream work. Students were able to retain more knowledge and we saw an increase in grades we saw an increase in student engagement. We saw an increase in student achievement. But student satisfa satisfaction went up and even their attendance rates went, went up. I don't, I don't think students even like missed class when it came to virtual reality. Um, but we did measure it in history and over 90%, 94% of students um, attended each class when virtual reality was used as a classroom. Um, when measured up against the traditional classroom face-to-face -face, as well as the tradition, the online classroom. So um, that's how you can build engagement and allow students to be able to retain knowledge because they're there, they're present and they're focused and they're not distracted. And it builds these 21st century skills that we always talk about that's so important and essential. There are limitations of, um, in chemistry. Um, because we need certain amount of time at the bench and you can't really build certain skills uh, and certain skill-based laboratory techniques if you're not actually using your fingertips, right? You need these. So it's really important that we start the technology building to get more feasible type of haptic feedback gloves. Um, Fine motor skills are really important in chemistry. Uh, safety measures, um, having uh, the ability to be able to 
knowing glass is hot or cold, uh, being able to transfer the skills that you learn at the bench to the real world is important. But when I talk about 21st century skills and why I still believe in virtual reality as being real is collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and communication are one of the skills that whenever I talk to recruiters or people and having been the department chair of chemistry for three years and understanding what they're looking for and in the workplace, what most people value is less of that degree and more of can they work in teams? Are they creative? Are they flexible? Um, can they think through a problem? Are they persistent? Um, are they confident in their ability to understand uh, heady topics? That's what they want to know. I want to show you something that I got a video of me in the Oh, the bombs up. And it's really not feel. You can feel the rain. That is crazy town. I know, pretty wild, right? No, seriously. <laughs> Yeah, that's an example of the tactile feedback. The other type of feedback we have is force. So you see that red barn? Yeah. Take your finger and push down on that post. Like you're trying to but switch off the lights. Do you feel that? Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's the force feedback that's activating. It's a tendon on the back of your finger, stopping your finger from passing you through that. Wow. So you can feel solidity of objects in VR now, which is the first. The thing is, I'm tethered to that space. I can't move from where I am. You see how I have that box that I'm tethered to? And it's a whole situation. I have like, it's like a whole together. Yeah, right? Underneath it. Yeah, and you can run your hands through that wheat. Do you see that wheat in front of you? Uh huh. Run your hands through that, um, the field of wheat. It's, yeah. It feels nice and soft, right? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> on the screen, like you can oh, yeah, I'm going back and forth. Oh, I got you so good. Like, if they can take and hold objects. Yep. Hold me with it so you can. So there's some new buttons over on your left. <clears throat> the left mouse one will summon a fox. Her name is Wanda. You can put your palm up next to her. So hop right in. I literally just feel that on my hand. It felt really good. So this video is on my YouTube channel. Um. But there, there are so many different variations of what can be done with these haptic feedback gloves and they're getting lighter and lighter. And, um, and we're able to do more and more with them. So excited about what is new and what can be done in virtual reality with them. So let me just get back to this one. So then how can we restore a scientist's sense of self? How can we restore joy, not just to our students, but also to the educators and to other chemists? Uh, I was able to do it. I was able to do it for my senior students who didn't know if they want to have a graduation on campus or not. Um, and it was an amazing experience. I'm just going to let you hear it from one of my students because VR allowed students to become immersed in this setting and to have a higher concept of what the molecular world was like. You can't see molecules. And so it's the perfect way to help students have a molecular experience in the real world. Up. Uh -oh. Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. 
I love that. Let's try it again. This is the story of one of my neurodiverse students. I believe that virtual reality is the future of education, at least in STEM. I mean, I think if we're going to learn how to do science at the highest level at which creator science do it, we have to have the best tools possible. And this is one of them. So this student who has neurodiverse learning challenges, he has a speech impediment. He felt like virtual reality was the best way to be able to help him make it to graduation. And now he is a STEM educator. This is what the future of chemistry looks like. So Victory XR built a digital twin replica of Morehouse College, including our chemistry labs. And this is the future of chemistry, y'all. So literally, if you can't tell which one is the real lab, then we did our job. So these are the pictures, honestly. And then this is the digital twin. So the digital twin just looks way too good to be true because our um, software development team at Victory XR, shout out to Danny Coyle uh, and Aaron and Tyler and Izzy and oh my God, there's so many, I'm gonna miss some people. Uh, but the whole team, shout out to you all for the a job well done. And my, my guy, Steve Groves and Renee and uh, Ty, uh, all of them are great at what they do. Most importantly, I could not be here without these guys. Um, Dr. Ethel Green, mastermind, wonderful uh, educator, uh, taught the men's health course in biology. Dr. Ovell Hamilton, first preacher in the metaverse, um, history, published author, Sanctify Revolution on Amazon, go get it. Dr. Tanya Clark, Afrofuturist, um, first one to do a cross-disciplinary lesson from scratch with a literature piece um, to teach a lesson about uh, Superman versus Muhammad Ali. Um, myself, Dr. Christina Morris, who is in the Morehouse Center for Excellence in Education, teaching other educators how to uh, implement innovation in the classroom and helping to bring the neurodiverse on board. Uh, Professor Nikki Harris, who is an award-winning journalist who is teaching multimedia and storytelling and advanced level multimedia and storytelling as well. And Dr. Adrian Welcher, who taught a linked course with me in social problems and general chemistry within sociology. And for the 24 other professors that are coming on board, I thank you for your time and attention. We are the ultimate team. You will hear more from Morehouse College and our Morehouse New Metaverse University. Thank you to our sponsors, the National Science Foundation grant number 234090, Southern Company Qualcomm Unit. Unity Technologies, Meta, Trip Virtual Reality, because we do Meditation Mondays in the Metaverse. Victory XR, CEO, Steve Krebs, Morehouse in the Metaverse video credit goes to HYI Productions, Anthony Morris and Matthew Morris for their graphic design and production. And then our VR professors, uh, Dr. David Thomas, our president, and Dr. Kendra Brown, our provost and their support, and our wonderful Morehouse College students for all of their wonderful uh, beautiful genius. And if you are interested in becoming a collaborator on this project, contact me, the director of Morehouse in the Metaverse, Dr. Messina Morris at messina.morris at morehouse.edu at drmom.onuniverse.com or at unitethemetaverse.com. Thank you so kindly. I appreciate you. And this was exploring the capabilities of using a cross-disciplinary approach to implementing virtual reality in chemistry education. I'm Dr. Messina L. Morris, and this was session 366-1105 at the ACS Spring 2022 Bonding in Chemistry Symposium.